The acoustic guitar is the quintessential worship music instrument, perfect for stages, prayer closets, and campfires around the world. It is hard to imagine the typical worship team existing without an acoustic guitar, and rightly so. The acoustic guitar, as imperfect of an instrument as it is, continues to be the most foundational piece of nearly every worship team ensemble on the planet. If you are an acoustic guitar player or a worship leader who is trying to speak the acoustic guitar player's language and give them direction, we're going to walk through some super helpful tips in today's Weekly Worship Thoughts. The fundamental frequencies for the acoustic guitar typically range from 82 hertz to 392 hertz, with the bottom E ringing at 82 hertz and the third fret G on the top E string ringing at 392 hertz. All right, so here we have 82 hertz. And right here, the third fret at the top string here is 392 hertz. That fundamental frequency range covers basically every open chord note played within the first five frets. Now obviously there are harmonics in play and adding a capo changes the range substantially, but the acoustic guitar is naturally a low to low mid range instrument. Using a capo is the easiest way to play the acoustic guitar in different keys. By simply learning the G, C, D, and E minor chord, you can pretty much play in every key by playing those same chords with the capo in a different position on the fretboard. Now that is a great trick, but it's not really the best use of a capo. The capo is most helpful in allowing you to achieve a different voicing for the key in which you are playing. Some songs simply sound better in the G voicing, even if you are playing in the key of C, for example. By using a capo, you will typically utilize different frequencies, which could be very helpful depending on your worship team instrumentation. If you have a second acoustic guitarist in the band, consider having that guitarist use a capo and play in a different voicing. Also, to keep the music crisp and clean, have that guitarist use a different strum pattern. Perhaps they play only whole notes during the verse and add dynamics by strumming 16th notes in the chorus and bridge, just as an example. All right, so this is what a 1-4-5 progression sounds like in the key of C on the first five frets. Regular chords, and it sounds like this. Very nice, right? But if you simply add a capo, we can put it on the fifth fret, and now we can play using the G voicing, and we're still playing the same chords. Kind of cool. Now let's say we have two acoustic guitarists, all right? The first one could be playing that C voicing and just using whole notes in the first five frets, while the second acoustic guitarist could put that capo on the fifth fret and play quarter notes, and that would sound like this. The musical buddy for the acoustic guitar is the hi-hat. If you're wondering what kind of strum pattern you should use, listen no further than the hi-hat. The acoustic guitar often gives tonal expression to the drummer's hi-hat. In fact, a great strumming technique to use sometimes is all down strums to match a quarter note rhythm on the hi-hat, and then solid up and down strums to match an eighth note rhythm on the hi-hat. All right, to show this concept, I've got our handy dandy drummer in a pocket here. Thank you, GarageBand. And this is the beat that our drummer is gonna be playing. So let's listen just in on that hi-hat. Put everything back in. So You can hear how all down strums are really working well with that hi-hat. Now don't be afraid to use all down strums when playing the acoustic guitar within the context of a band. Sometimes that just sounds the best. If you're on your own or playing in a small band, you may need to consider your instrument to be the main percussion piece and you may need to strum your heart out to create an effective groove. 
However, when the acoustic guitar is played within the context of a full band, treating it like a percussive instrument is a sure shortcut to sloppy fill. So we've got our handy dandy drummer again. I'm just gonna show you how bad this sounds when I strum away. Imagine that there are even more instruments, but we'll just start with this. One thing that is super important for acoustic guitarists to keep in mind is that good dynamics are typically achieved more through the strumming pattern than through strumming intensity, especially when you're playing acoustic guitar within the context of a full band. Acoustic guitar players often make the mistake of thinking that they have to strum harder when the song is supposed to be really big dynamically, but in reality, the dynamics are typically already changing with the other instruments in the band, and the acoustic guitarist's role is to either remain a solid rhythmic foundation or simply add more subdivisions in their strumming. Now on the flip side, changing your strumming intensity is a pretty fun way to break a lot of strings, so there is that. Now to model this, let's pretend that we're playing a verse, and the verse just goes like this. And then instead of playing harder when the chorus comes in or the bridge comes in, let's just add more subdivisions. So we'll go from to something like this. And back to the verse. I never actually changed my intensity, I just changed the frequency of my strumming. Always remember that consistency is key. The acoustic guitar is such a solid foundational worship music instrument. To play it well, you need to pick a strumming pattern that you can play well for the duration of the song. Other instruments may be coming and going as the song progresses, but the acoustic guitar will typically remain throughout. This is creating good dynamics, by the way. Sadly, for the guitarist, the acoustic guitar will often get lost in the mix as the song progresses. This is not a problem. Don't panic. In fact, many members of the congregation will typically only notice the acoustic guitar when it is being played poorly. Don't do that. Play it strong. Play it well. Play it to the glory of God. If you are an acoustic guitar player, what was one interesting truth or idea that stood out to you about your instrument? And how do you think that truth or idea will help you in the future? If you are not an acoustic guitar player, what did you learn about how to effectively communicate with the acoustic guitarists in your worship team? In your own words, how would you say the acoustic guitar fits into the typical worship music pie? How big of a slice should it get? What is its main role in a typical worship team setting? How does the acoustic guitar typically fit into your own worship team context? Do you think you typically give it too big of a slice, too small of a slice, or just right? Given the information you just received, what do you think is the number one thing that individual acoustic guitarists and your specific worship team context should work on in order to improve the overall quality of the worship team as a whole?